Emotions are meant to be acknowledged and expressed whether or not people accept them or not. When someone hurts you, your feelings are valid regardless of the other person's intent. You are not wrong for hurting. So don't let anyone dictate how or what you should be feeling. Hello Royal Beauties, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Cricket Williams B. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the importance of emotional health and living a balanced life. So there are three components of a man. Well, I wanna say four components of a man, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual with the fourth component being emotional. However, I feel as though that the fourth component is more connected to the mental. The emotional component helps keep the other three balanced. It's like an alarm or an alert that signals our mind when things are not balanced. It lets us know when all is well or not well with us. I like to compare the four components to a table with four legs. If the table loses a leg or if the legs are uneven for some reason, then the table is unstable, it's not sturdy. Emotions are always in motion, not necessarily a fixed component. Although we always have some type of emotion, our emotions are constantly changing. One minute we're sad, the next minute we're frustrated, then we're excited. Emotions are meant to be felt or acknowledged, expressed or worked out and to pass through and out of us. They are not meant to stay. They are what makes us human. And we all experience different levels of emotions in different ways based on our personalities, our culture, or our upbringing or whatever is going on at the moment. Suppression is the result of stagnant emotions. It's the result of emotions that have not been dealt with. Unresolved issues tucked away in the corners of our mind or heart. When you've experienced something so traumatic or don't deal with something because it's so painful, it can become repressed Repression is the subconscious mind's way of hiding an issue from the conscious mind in a way of protecting you. So you can live with these issues and not realize they are there. Do you really think it's part of your personality to always be mad, to always be sad, to always be depressed that God created you that way? No. These emotions are red flags, alerting you that something is off balance, something is wrong. A lot of times this imbalance shows in ways of self-sabotage, addictions, overspending. I guess that could be like an addiction, you know, just to name a few. Look, I'm not a psychologist, but this is all based on my experience and what I've learned and trying to find a solution for why I've struggled so much in life, working in ministry. We live in a culture where it is not cool to express certain emotions. Like a straight man can't be loving and affectionate without being considered gay. A woman cannot express dissatisfaction without being called the B word. Hurt and sadness are like signs of weakness. We even teach our children early on to suppress their feelings. A child cries and because we can't deal with the crying, we tell them to shut up, man up, if he's a boy. So how does that work? How can a boy man up if he's a boy? Instead of teaching them how to verbalize what is going on within them, we'll tell them, hush, ain't nothing wrong with you. When it's very apparent that there is something wrong because, you know, they're crying. Now, I understand that. I mean, some kids, as mothers, we can tell the difference between a hurt cry, their frustrated cry, mad cry, or 
they faking. Something's wrong. Even when they're faking, like, why you faking? We only do it because it was done to us. And that's the only way we know how to deal with emotions. Then the kids grow up being angry adults, struggling with anxiety, depression, trust issues, along with a host of other issues. And then it goes from generation to generation to generation. Emotions are meant to be acknowledged and expressed whether or not people accept them or not. When someone hurts you, your feelings are valid regardless of the other person's intent. You are not wrong for hurting. So don't let anyone dictate how or what you should be feeling. Emotions are not to be controlled. Although you do have a choice how you act out on your emotions. If you're hurt, you need to acknowledge it. If you feel someone took advantage of you, you need to express that. If you love someone, tell them. If you are angry, allow yourself to be angry. It's better to express your anger at that moment and let it pass through and out of you than to suppress it and remain in a perpetual state of being angry and eventually not remembering why you're angry because you've been angry so long. Believing the lie that that's just the way you've always been. Sometimes when we get angry, we brush it off and say, I'm good. When we haven't even gone through the process of dealing with that emotion. Yes, it's okay to be angry. It is good emotional health to own your emotions and deal with them at the onset. Seek support in a trustworthy friend or a confidant. If you can't talk with that person directly who hurt you, however, you may need to have that difficult conversation with that person. But it's not always necessary, especially if they are unwilling to talk to you. You can just talk to God. Talk to Jesus. When you have no one else to talk to. <laughs> and you may say, well, Cricket, I've been praying for months and it still hurts. Keep talking to God. Every time the feeling pops up until it doesn't bother you anymore. People will get tired of hearing your sob story, but God never does. Just so you know, though, there will come a point where your sorrow will turn from venting into complaining if you allow it to because you are struggling with letting go of the hurt. It's good to vent because you need to get it up and out of you, but complaining is actually doing the opposite. So at some point, you want to just only bring your hurt to God. Stop rehashing what that person did. If you're still hurting, just say, Lord, I'm still hurting and I don't know how to stop hurting. I need your help. And he will show up when you are least expecting. He doesn't need to hear the incident over and over because he was there. You retelling the story over and over again is just keeping it alive in you, causing you not to be focused on your own personal healing. That's another video. So good emotional health is acknowledging your feelings. Sometimes you have to identify what you're feeling, express it, work through it if need be. Yes. Allow yourself to go through the process. Feel what you need to feel, then release it. If you have prolonged issues, though, that you are really struggling with and you feel that you need to see a mental health specialist, by all means, do what you feel you need to do to take care of you. Okay, Royal Beauties, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. I look forward to sharing with you on my next video. In the meantime, Know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Now hold your head up high and go rock what your creator gave you. Love you guys. Peace and God bless.